Since the Great Recession in 2009, the U.S. has added just over 22 million jobs uh, to non-farm payrolls. It took over 10 years to uh, add that many new jobs, but in only two months, total unemployment claims have spiked above 36 million, and unfortunately, more will follow. To put this uh, economic shock in perspective, let's go ahead and look at weekly unemployment claims. The first chart I have for you goes back over 50 years and includes uh, seven recessions. The past recessions are shaded in gray. During the last U.S. recession, the worst week for unemployment claims uh, reached 665,000. And looking back further, the max weekly claims come in just a little higher. It reached uh, 695,000 in 1982. Now, thanks to COVID-19 and the self-induced recession, a few weekly claims have come in close to 7 million. Luckily, they've come down a bit in recent weeks, but they're still well above historical records. No one could have predicted this would happen in 2020. Of course, most of us knew, or knew a pandemic was possible in our globalized world, although it has uh, too low of a probability in any given year to really bank on. That's unless you're an insurance company, which I'm sure insurance companies are gonna see an uptick in requests for pandemic insurance. Instead, I'm, I'm now interested in how the unemployment rate spike uh, impacts another big trend. I've been personally watching the economy shift for over 10 years, and I've been looking at trends going back much, much further. We're entering a new economic paradigm, and recent events have really just added fuel to the fire. Uh, one of my favorite books is Rise of the Robots by, um, by Martin Ford, and it's packed with a lot of great research and ideas. Uh, the next chart that I have for you comes from this book, and I found the source um, along with updated data for it. Now, before I share that chart, I'd really appreciate it if you just tap the like button down below ever so gently, as well as subscribe to my channel. Uh, one thing that I think sets me apart is my understanding of financial markets, as well as how I deliver ideas in a concise way. Just for a really quick background, uh, starting out, I doubled in finance and accounting. And then afterwards, I went to work in Beijing, China with a cryptocurrency company. That was, I think, just over five years ago. And following that, I then finished up the CFA exams. The, the three CFA exams included over 6,000 pages of core study material. Um, and it's considered one of the hardest exam series in the world. Uh, but with this background, I'm able to connect some interesting, often overlooked ideas. Now, just one last quick note, uh, on the video creation side, I'm still new. Uh, I know my video quality, video and audio quality is a bit rough around the edges, but I hope the insight I provide, backed by data, is enough to, to keep you around. Um, too many sources online, I think, beat around the bush and don't really have a lot of supporting data. Uh, and if not, just go ahead and please let me know in the comments how you think I can improve. I'd, I'd love any feedback on that side. All right, the next chart that I have for you shows labor force participation. It's the percentage of people working compared to the total amount of people who are able to work as defined by the government. The data goes back to 1948 and the rate bounces around 59%. Uh, going well into the 1960s. From that point on, uh, more women actually started to enter the workforce. That's one big reason that the rate climbs steadily over the next few decades. The rate then tops out just over six, 67% in the year 2000. But from there, it starts dropping again, and then over the last few years, it's hovered around 63%. That was until the recent wave of unemployment claims. That's pushed the labor force participation uh, back down to 60%, the same level we saw in the late 1960s. COVID-19 has caused the recent big drop, but I'm more worried about its sustained impact on the downward trend over the last two decades. 
with recent economic cycles, we've seen more jobs lost than added. Uh, and for better or worse, the recent round of huge layoffs and the shift to working from home is going to lead to more job replacing automation. In the last chart that I'm sharing today, it's uh, my favorite chart. Um, automation is the first of three big trends. The impact of automation today is unparalleled with the past. Unlike the past industrial revolution, a small team of developers can uh, create software that replaces tens of thousands of jobs. Minus the jobs lost from automation, it's still improving all of our lives. It's improved food production, uh, supply chains, healthcare, and many other areas of our world. This has helped push the next big trend, which is population growth. In the last 50 years, the world population has roughly doubled. As a result, more people are looking for jobs, and this has led to higher true unemployment. As you've seen in the, the previous unemployment graphs uh, with uh, the dropping labor force participation. One overlooked impact of these changes in the economy is the need for higher education. Um, that's to fill the new job, the new fewer jobs that do pop up. Although this impact makes the problem worse. Most unemployment numbers completely omit full-time students and some other groups from the equation. Uh, for example, if we factored them into the total labor force, the downward trend in labor force participation, uh, that participation rate would actually look a little worse. Now, the last connecting thread with these, uh, these big trends is advancing education. Um, the world population on average is becoming more intelligent, and this is leading to faster automation. It's a continuous loop and it's leading to a new economic paradigm. To learn more about this topic, you can check out the article I've included in the description below. Uh, and if you have any thoughts, um, please do share. I'd really appreciate it. Uh, also, one last time, um, I'd really like it if you just tap the like button down below as well as subscribe to my channel. Uh, thanks for stopping by.